Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and welcome to this service of morning prayer and communion here at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Columbus, Ohio, on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you are tuning in and joining us from wherever you are this morning. I'm the Reverend Emily Corzine, uh, Associate Minister here. I'm joined by Senior Minister Reverend Dr. Tim Ahrens, Music Minister Kevin Jones, and Director of Christian Education Mark Williams. We know that this is an unsettling time. We know that there is lot, a lot going on in the world around us. And even though we are not in the same space, we trust that God's spirit continues to draw us together as community as we seek comfort and guidance and a holy purpose for our lives. So we're glad that you're joining us uh, for morning prayer. You can find worship materials on the worship page of our website. We also are working from home, but we are also open for business. Uh, if you are looking for help, if you are looking to help, if you are looking to grow in your faith or interested in being part of this faith community in a more meaningful way, please check us out, email us, and let us know. We would love to hear from you. People of God, let us turn our hearts towards the sacred with friends near and far and lean in to the beauty of this service of worship. Let us worship God. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh God, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reconcile ourselves to one another and to Christ uh, through passing of the peace. And so we extend the hand of peace to one another. The peace of God be always with you and, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us share the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Good morning, everybody. Yes, I brought a new friend with me. Well, Maybe new to you. This is a friend that I've had for some time, right? Yes, this is Oscar. Oscar, can you say hello? Yeah, yeah. They see you, yeah. You're waving, all right, good deal. But, yes, you may blow them a kiss. There you go, all right. So I have something to say now, okay? You listen? Okay. So, do you like scary stories? Oscar, do you like scary stories? No? 
No, oh, do you like scary stories? I don't like scary stories. It's okay, Oscar, it's okay, okay. So, I'm not a big fan of scary stories. And I like happy stories, don't you? Yeah, I like happy stories. But you know what? There are a lot of happy stories in the Bible. Did you know that? Yeah, there's lots of happy stories in the Bible. But you know what, too? There's some scary stories in the Bible. But, there's a but there, yes. But, there's one thing common in the scary stories and the happy stories in the Bible. You know what that one thing is? You don't know either, do you? It's God. God is right there in all of the scary and happy stories of the Bible. And God is with you in the scary times and the happy times too. Right now it's a little scary, right? With COVID and we have to wash our hands and we have to be really careful. That's a little scary. But then there are happy times when you get to play out in the backyard or at the park. But Whatever you're going through, scary times or happy times, God is with you all the time. Yes. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for being with us in the scary times and the happy times. And thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. See you next week. first reading this morning comes to us from the 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning in the first verse. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and he set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together, and when they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac, and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, 
On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Holy God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, 
silence in us any voice but your own, that as your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you have for us this day. Amen. If my hands were anything other than hands, they would be a street corner jazz quintet. Artist, poet, and performer Vanessa German says this as she paints and sculpts on her front porch in the Homewood neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a neighborhood where kids often deal with the effects of violence on their streets. When she tells people she lives in Homewood, their jaws drop like they feel sorry for her or something. But she disagrees. She says, Homewood is like my Harlem. There is so much life and creativity in the community. She lives on the corner of a very busy intersection, a buzz with activity, people waiting for the bus, children playing outside. As people move about the neighborhood, they see her making her sculptures on her front porch and artwork. They ask her what's she making. They sometimes disagree with what, she, what, they, what she, they see on her front porch. They're not quite sure they like all that they see, but they keep asking what she's making. And the kids especially ask her, can we do it too? So she opened her front porch and kids came from wherever they were with whatever they had. She gathered whatever scraps she could find scraps of material and paintbrushes and pieces of wood, and the kids would come to her front yard and make art and foster community. Her front porch and her front yard were covered with art, supplies, and kids, letting kids come and make art while she was making her art on her porch was good for the soul, she says. Kids have come to find a sanctuary on her porch a place where they can bring their creativity, and they have found a place where they can belong. One day in March, a few years ago, Vanessa heard 21 gunshots. And she heard later that a girl and a man were shot not too many blocks from her porch. And in the wake of the violence on her streets, of her neighborhood and what she says an exhausting primary election season, she decided to make peaceful, nonviolent yard signs. And she enlisted the kids' help. No guns, keep summer fun, read one of them. Stop shooting, we love you, was another. The project is called Love Front Porch. Love Front Porch. It says, believe in what you believe, love what you love, let it be what it is, and do what it has to do. Love front porch. German says, I believe in the power of love. Art is love. And the community is a museum, the gallery, the exhibit space. That art unites that community. She asked a neighbor if she could use their house. He said yes. For about five months, this house in the neighborhood became a gallery, a performance space for their programming and shows that they could, until they could move on to a more permanent space. Vanessa claimed the space is where people of all ages can transform the community. When the community stands side by side, they are better together. I love that story. I love the story of Love Front Porch. I think about the Sunday a few weeks ago when artists across the city of Columbus came together to create art on the boarded up windows just a few blocks from here around Capitol Square and the Ohio Theater and up 4th and 3rd Streets. It was a space of creativity and the hashtag was Art Unites Seabus. Art Unites Columbus. And if you haven't had an opportunity to walk past these art pieces or driven by through State Street or Broad and High, I would encourage you to do so. I bet if you just Googled Art Unites Seabus, you could probably see some of them too. These images tell many stories. 
They tell the message of love and peace and justice as it rings from those vibrant images and poems and signs from voices that have been long silenced. They are cries for justice and reconciliation. They are cries and tears streaming down the faces of those who have wept for centuries and still do today. It's like they are on love front porch too, engaging the community to come alive with the activity of peace and justice, to somehow reclaim the very space where devastation shattered that world and where hope can begin again. Because hope didn't just, the devastation didn't just shatter the windows. The devastation has been shattering lives for centuries. And only with the hope can they begin to heal. The message in the gospel text this morning reminds me of Love Front Porch. Jesus says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in my name, in the name of a disciple, I truly tell you, none of these will lose their reward. It's a call of radical hospitality. It's a call of welcome. It's the call that radical hospitality has been placed upon us, and it always has been. The welcome to those who are in our midst in the name of Jesus Christ, that has the power enough to unite a community, to unite a city, and unite a country, and unite a world. And so just like Love Front Porch, the power of God's love and grace and reconciliation empowers us to be better together, to heal our community and to, and, um, and to heal our community, but also to recognize who God has already claimed us to be. The message of Love Front Porch is that when we welcome one, we welcome God. When we welcome one among us, we welcome Jesus and we welcome a relationship to begin that we might see possibilities of the kingdom of God to come near. For the kingdom of God is at hand and love front porch might just show us the way. So may we all find our way to love front porch. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Serve, 
and whom we hold in our hearts in prayer. I invite you now to lift silently or aloud, wherever you are, the needs, concerns, and thanksgivings that you have. Gracious God, in this week that we turn our eyes, our attention to our national holiday, the 4th of July, we know that from the beginning we were created not equally because of the words we wrote, because of the existence of the institution of slavery. And so it is as those who hobble into the 4th of July that we move toward it. We are not ashamed of the things that have been so strong, so good, and so beautiful in our long history as a nation. But we carry the concern and the repentant hearts of those who have to name and have to change those things that have crippled us, that have caused us to walk with a limb. We ask that for those who have been hurt, those who have been left behind, those who have been forgotten or forsaken, we lift them in this day so that we may be one, as you have called us to be one, so that we can proudly proclaim that we are united, that we are a people who stand together and work together and seek the best for everyone, the common good of all. Bless us in this day, Lord, and hear our prayers. Almighty God, in Christ, you have embraced all of life through the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Pour out your grace upon us, that we may love all of life as you have loved us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Eternal God, you create us by your power, and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Each week we receive an offering that strengthens a ministry that is local, or perhaps regional, or national, or global. Today we receive an offering for Deep Griha, means the lighthouse. And this ministry and mission in, in Pune, India, has been in existence for 35, 40 years now. And it has transformed the, the, the community in such a way that the children, and particularly women, who have been left without hope or income, are given an opportunity to have an education and establish hope through their work. So, in this year, when the foundress of the organization has passed to eternal life, a woman who has given herself, Nila Anawali, to serve her people all her life, we ask that we remember her. We ask you to remember Deep Griha and to be generous in sharing, to continue their mission, particularly in the crisis of COVID-19 as it hits India and as it hits her community and their community. Let us be generous in sharing our morning offering. Thank you.
Years ago, I was blessed to be present and to preach at the Ma'afa in Brooklyn, New York. The Ma'afa is the Swahili word for the great suffering. Too often we refer to the crossing of Africans to America as slaves as the Middle Passage. Unfortunately, that's an expression that comes from uh, those who benefited from the sale of slaves. It was the middle of three passages and the, the goods went back to Europe and then from Europe to Africa and again the Triangle. But the Ma'afa means the great suffering and the experience of those who suffered in slavery. So as the community in St. Paul gathers every year, they always celebrate communion. And one of the things that I have come to love about the communion at St. Paul Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, is that when they celebrate communion, they raise the bread and they said, to Jesus. And they raise the cup and they say, to Jesus. And I, I asked Dr. Youngblood, where did you come up with that? And he said, it came from the slaves. That when they were alone in the woods and they would celebrate communion, the story goes that it was the high point of their mass in the woods. And they celebrated the suffering, sacrificial love of God in Jesus that they could identify with. To Jesus, let us celebrate this great feast and remember them today. Gracious God, we gather for Jesus to celebrate and remember him. We ask you to help us to grow more deeply in our faith. And as we come to his table of grace, may we remember the love that he gives to us each day. And may we especially hold fast the promises of salvation that we come to experience in the bread and the cup, the body and blood of Christ shared, broken, and given to us. We pray in his name. Amen. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, when Jesus was with his disciples, he took bread. And he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he poured it out and said, this is my blood, the cup of salvation poured out for you. Whenever you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious God, send your spirit upon this bread, this cup, and may we receive them here in the graciousness and the gratitude of the celebration of your presence in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. So my friends, to Jesus. Please join.
join me in the post-communion prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. In preparing to depart, <clears throat> we as a faith community have heard the word and are called to respond and serve. There are many ways to serve our neighbors and this faith community. Here are some ways to serve and help during this time of pandemic. Watch your email, church website, and Facebook for updates concerning our faith community and how we will organize to help those in need during this time. Just a reminder, all worship will be online until further notice. No in-person worship. We encourage our families to check out the information about the free church camp. There's a couple more weeks left, and the information is in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Please note all the virtual studies and meetings that are being offered this week. Everyone is invited to continue to participate in the 21-day Racial Equity Challenge. It is sponsored by the Christian Education and Justice and Mercy Commissions. The 21-Day Racial Equity Habit Building Challenge is where you do one action of your choice per day <clears throat> to further your understanding of power, privilege, supremacy, oppression, and equity. We continue to host meetings each Monday for us to discuss what we have learned during this challenge in a safe place. You will find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. If you need to be in touch with Reverend Aarons or Reverend Corzine for emergency, pastoral care, or in a name, a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. This number is in the Departure Serve Leaflet. <clears throat> Just a reminder that you can give, your, that your giving can be done through PayPal, Easy Tithe, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the week or to the regular church budget. If you have not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings through this time for engagement, activities, <clears throat> and devotion. So please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. You are invited to the virtual coffee hour after the service today. You will find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just click, click on the link and you will take, be taken to the coffee hour. We also encourage you to check on your neighbor and ways you may be helpful to them. Let us sing the closing hymn as we depart with a heart to serve. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.